Thank you very much to our captioner, Lenore S., and our interpreters, Lisa and Shante. My name is Dr. Elisa Schwartz, and I'm the Director of Artist Initiatives here at Creative Capital. My pronouns are she, her, and I have long dark hair and I'm wearing a black shirt and sitting in front of a desk in a bookcase. I'm joining you today from the unceded native land of the Lenape people, also known as Brooklyn, New York. I encourage you all to introduce yourselves by placing your names, pronouns, and locations in the chat. And thank you everyone for joining us today. The purpose of this info session is to give you an overview of the application and to answer questions um, when possible. For a more detailed guide though, I really encourage you to see our application handbook, which is available on the Creative Capital website. Um, my colleague Isaac will be dropping that link in the chat. The application, as I'm sure many of you know, is currently live. It takes less than an hour to complete, so please apply today. The application will be closing on April 1st at 4 p.m. Eastern time. It's my pleasure to be speaking to you today about Wild Futures, Art, Culture, Impact. This is the one-time theme for our next grant cycle in 2023 and 2024. Each grant provides varying amounts of up to $50,000, professional services, and a community of fellow awardees and other professionals. For this grant, we seek experimental risk-taking projects that push the boundaries formally and thematically and venture into wild, out there, never before seen concepts and futures, real or imagined. Ultimately, we are seeking proposals for groundbreaking new work, including but not limited to work that attends to the many relationships between social, economic, and environmental justice and advances the global dialogue around critical issues impacting the sustainability of artists, our communities, our planets, and beyond. We are going to be funding 50 projects in 2023 that are in the disciplines of performing arts, technology, and literature. And socially engaged and sustainable projects are encouraged in all of the disciplinary categories above. In 2024, we will be funding 50 projects in visual arts and moving image and film. And again, socially engaged and sustainable projects are encouraged in all of those disciplines. So to put it a bit more concretely, that means that we fund dance, theater, music, jazz, technology, literature, drawing, painting, photography, sculpture, installation, time-based work, moving image, socially engaged work, sustainable work. To be clear though, if you are an artist working within performing arts, technology, and literature, you should please apply now. The application for this current cycle, the 2023 cycle, which is open to these disciplines, closes April 1st. If you are an artist working in visual arts or moving image, please wait until the 2024 application cycle opens next year. We invite artists to submit their proposals based on which area experts are most suited and qualified to review the project proposal, with the understanding that radical art is often by nature interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary, and antidisciplinary. By choosing to apply within a certain disciplinary category, we're asking you to choose how you want to frame the discussion around your work and to indicate to us which experts are most qualified to evaluate your proposal. I'm sure there'll be some more questions about that. So please do ask questions um, once we break for the q and I'm now going to go though a little bit deeper into the application process. The application process consists of three rounds. The first round, which is open right now, is the letter of inquiry round. This is going to um, ask of you demogra uh, demographic information, it's going to ask your project title and description. It'll ask for a resume, bio, and optional artist website. And then you're going to be asked six project questions, which I'll elaborate on in just a second. We've streamlined this part of the application process, so it now should take less than one hour to complete. 
And we've done this because we want this to be as least a burden as it can be on artists. And we want to encourage artists who have not thought about applying to creative capital to apply. Round two is going to be asking of you the project details. Artists who are advanced to round two will submit an itemized budget, a timeline, and up to five work samples. These include five images or five uh, video or audio clips for a maximum of three minutes. And then finally, there will be a proof of eligibility and optional project updates round. This is the final round um, as projects advance to panel review. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's now take a closer look though at those six project questions so you can be prepared on how to best answer them. The first question is, how does your project take an original and imaginative approach to content and form? And here we ask you to please be as specific as possible. This is a question that's really asking, how is your project pushing boundaries, taking risks, and exploring an idea in a new or different way? <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> um, projects that are going to be competitive for the Creative Capital Grant should challenge the status quo and spark conversations in new and innovative ways. Remember though, innovation can occur in a variety of areas like form, function, content, and technicality. So this is really a place for you to tell us why your project idea is innovative, original, and imaginative. The second question asks you, <coughs> excuse me, to please place your work in context so that we may better evaluate it. What are the main influences upon your work? This is an opportunity for you to explain not only what your work is about, but also how it fits in to a broader discourse, be it within the field of art or outside of it. Be specific and as concrete as possible here, naming the actual influences who shaped your practice, if applicable. The third question is, what kind of impact, artistic, intellectual, communal, civic, social, political, environmental, et cetera, do you hope your project will have? What strategies will you employ to achieve the desired impact? This question is a chance for you to explain what you wish to accomplish with your work. The impact of your project could be specific. It could impact a small community or audience with specific concerns, or it could be more expansive, engaging a wide amount of people across the country or a very broad discourse of knowledge. The fourth question, is who are the specific audiences and communities that you hope to engage through this project? This I know is very related to the question before, but this is really a chance for you to name who exactly you anticipate engaging with or seeing your work. Try to be more specific than general groupings like theater lovers or readers. Who exactly is your work for? This question allows evaluators to see what kinds of individuals, communities, or organizations would be most responsive to and appreciative of this project. The fifth question is, how might your proposed project act as a catalyst for your artistic and professional growth? In what ways is this a pivotal moment in your practice? We want to know at Creative Capital how artists envision their work changing in the next few years and what part of this proposed project uh, will play in those goals. These uh, responses provide us with a sense of your artistic ambition and your level of engagement with professional development. And finally, how would our non-monetary services help you realize your goals for this project and or your long-term artistic and professional growth? The Creative Capital Grant provides awardees with services that include things like strategic planning, legal and financial counsel, community building, networking, and communication support. We're really invested in providing you with the tools that you need to build a sustainable career, not only during the life of your project, but also beyond it. So let us know if any of these services would be helpful to you and how. Creative Capital allows you to apply as a collaborative. Collaborations, including families, should just submit one application. 
a collaborator or collective member is a co-owner of the project and a generative part of the team. So I know this can be a gray area. If you're wondering to yourself whether you should list a director or a fabricator or someone else who's intimately involved with the work as a collaborator on your work, ask yourself, is this person a co-owner of the project? Is that the relationship you have? If so, then that would be appropriate for a collaboration. If not, then you should apply as an individual artist. Collaborators can be associated with only one proposal. So that means that you cannot apply as an individual artist as well as part of a collaboration. You have to choose just one of those options. And no changes may be made to collaborations after submission. The timeline for the 2023 cycle, which again is open to performing arts, literature, and technology projects, is as follows. From March 1st till April 1st, the application is open. This means you have one month to submit your letter of inquiry to us, which includes those six questions I discussed. The application will be closing April 1st at 4 p.m. Eastern time. In July, round two advances will be notified. So those will be the projects that are selected to move on to the next stage and will be providing us with work samples, a timeline and budget. In September, round three advances will be notified. So those are the projects um, that are advancing to the final stage. And there you'll be asked to provide us with your proof of eligibility as well as optional project updates. Um, and finally, in January 2023, the awardees will be announced, announced. Finally, I'd like to go over the eligibility criteria. In order to be eligible for the Creative Capital Grant, you must be eligible to receive taxable income in the United States. You must be at least 25 years old. You must be an artist with at least five years of professional artistic practice. Um, this is something we define very broadly though. This means that for at least five years, you've been working in a public fashion in some capacity in your work. Um, you may not be enrolled in a full-time degree granting program. Unfortunately, this does include people who are ABD, PhDs, and also people who are enrolled in low residency programs. Um, and you cannot apply as an individual or collaborator on more than one project. As I mentioned, the application is closing next week, April 1st at 4 p.m. Eastern time. And I would also like to mention that because of the thousands of applications that we receive, support will be extremely limited in the last week of application. So please get your proposals in now if you can. With that, I'd now like to open for questions. Um, please use the Q&A button to ask your question so I can see it. And if I don't get to your question during this info session, please feel free to email us at awards at creativecapital.org. So with that, I will stop sharing my screen and I will try to answer the questions uh, that I have received. Um, so the first question is, what does the wild and wild futures represent to Creative Capital? How does it define the kind of projects you're seeking? Um, here, WILD is really just a way of us affirming our commitment to innovative, groundbreaking work, work we haven't seen before. And beyond that, I really encourage you to tell us how your project fits within that criteria. If we recently applied for the Creative Capital um, and Hewlett Foundation uh, Arts Commission, can we use the same proposal for this award cycle? Um, so Creative Capital recently administered a grant for the Hewlett Foundation, which was open to media artists you are able to apply to the Creative Capital Award as an individual artist, uh, even if you apply to Hewlett, um, using the same proposal, that's fine. Um, let's see, uh, can we define groundbreaking more specifically? Um, that is actually always a very difficult thing to do. Um, I would say in some ways, um, one of my favorite definitions actually, uh, that sort of speaks to the nature of contemporary art and groundbreaking art comes from uh, Jacques Ramsier, an aesthetic theorist. And he says, um, avant-garde art should be that which challenges the very category of what art has been. 
So another way of saying that is it should be something that we haven't seen before, something that's making us question the parameters of what it means to be working in your discipline or in your field or is challenging the status quo in some other way. So it's a very tricky thing to define, but I think it really has to do with an element of risk taking, an element of challenging the status quo or the way things have been seen, uh, have seen to us before, and also perhaps an element of surprise. Um, um, all right, uh, what is the work sample for literature? Um, good question, and this is something that is in the application handbook uh, for literature. You are um, invited to submit, obviously, written work samples, um, and you'll have to look in the application handbook to see the, the page length, I can't quite recall it. Um, and similarly, how do we define literature? Um, once you start the application, you'll see that there are some subcategories within literature. We have categories that are um, nonfiction, experimental fiction, um, poetry, uh, graphic novels. Um, so for a full list, uh, please see either the application handbook or start the application, you can see for yourself. Um, that one. Um, Uh, is there a page word limit for the letter of inquiry? Um, there is. So once you log into our application portal, you'll be answering all of those questions in text boxes, and there'll be a clearly posted limit to the words that can fit in each box. Um, so you can see that on there, all of the answers are between 100 and 200 words. All right. Um, is a graphic novel considered literature or visual arts? Uh, we do have it as one of the literature categories, um, though again, if it's something that for you really aligns itself more with perhaps drawing or printmaking, um, you tell us where you would like it reviewed, but we do have it as its own category within literature. Where is the best place to find the non-monetary services Creative Capital offers? That's a great question. Um, I would suggest that you check out our website and you can uh, navigate there um, to see the kinds of professional development programs and educational workshops that we offer and the kinds of consultants that we've worked with. Um, I'm sorry, I'm going to try and answer questions that uh, I have not uh, answered already. Um, okay, uh, do the five years of being a working artist have to be consecutive? They do not have to be consecutive. It is five years total. Um, it's also okay if you've been working as an artist in one discipline, say you're you know, someone who is a dancer, um, but you wanna apply for a project in another discipline. We actually really encourage these kinds of imaginative crossovers in people's practices. Um, in terms of eligibility, being a student, um, I know that sometimes uh, in our previous application materials, uh, we've said that um, you cannot be in a full-time degree granting program. You can also not be in a part-time degree granting program. If you are a student of any kind, it's best to wait until after to apply for the Creative Capital Award, you will not be eligible as a student. Um, and I feel this very deeply as someone who is a ABD PhD for quite a number of years. I know it can be frustrating. Let's see. Um, um, let's see. So what is the definition of a collaborator? Can I be a possible dancer, choreographer on another project? Um, this is a good question. I know it's something that's always a bit tricky. The definition, well, creative capital's definition for a collaborator for our purposes is that someone who is a full co-owner of the project. So someone who is just as much an author of the idea as you, the initial applicant are. Um, if someone is a collaborator on your project, they cannot be applying as an individual artist, um, you know, on an, you know, another uh, pro project proposal. Um, so think very, you know, hard about how you understand your relationship with the person that you're working with. You can always describe key individuals in the project who aren't necessarily collaborators, and you can describe their contribution to the work without designating them as collaborators. Um, so again, it's up to you to tell us if a dancer or choreographer 
is someone who is a co-owner of your project, um, though they cannot be a collaborator on your project and another project. Great. Um, so this is a question, um, and I think there are a couple like this uh, that have to do with this uh, disciplinary categorization, which I know is always a bit of a conundrum. Um, so this person asks, if my proposal is a technology-based installation work that relates to social engagement and immersive experiences, I'm torn between whether my project fits into this year's technology category or if I should wait to apply to next year's visual arts category. I feel like my project is between the two. I imagine that many people feel like this in various ways about their practice and their potential projects. Um, lots of artists work in between of contemporary art really challenges disciplinary categorization. So this is where it's really up to you to tell us what kind of evaluation criteria or what, what kind of expertise you want in the room um, when your proposal is being discussed. So if you want your work to be evaluated in relationship to other technology projects, in the case of this person's example, technology would be the right category. If you're really centering the use of emerging technology in the work, if this sort of immersive experience is you know, really centering the technological aspects that make that possible, then perhaps that's an appropriate category. If this is something that is really participating more in the discourse of visual art, if it's about perceptual or phenomenological experience, and you think that people versed in that discourse would be a better fit to evaluate it, then you should choose visual art. So really, this is a place for you as an artist to exercise some choice and agency. Both categories in this example, I agree, sound like they could be appropriate. So you tell us, where would you rather the conversation about your work to take place? Um, here's a new question. Um, so uh, for artists who are faculty at universities, do they apply on behalf of the university or as an individual? Does the award go to the individual or institution? The Creative Capital Award is really geared for individual artists or artists who are working as collaboratives. Um, so you would not be applying on behalf of the university um, and you should not be applying on behalf of another institution. It's you as an individual artist that we are interested in funding. So you yourself would be the name on the application and this person speaking to the project. Um, are designers and architects considered artists? Uh, good question. Um, we don't have a separate disciplinary category for design and architecture. Um, so if your project is using components of design and architecture in relationship to another discipline, for example, if you are building out a visual installation that uses elements or sort of discourses around architecture, or if you are creating a work that's very invested in the history of design, um, then the application, uh, sorry, then the Creative Capital Grant might be applicable to you. If you're someone who's working within these fields, though, with no relationship to any of the disciplines we do fund, um, it's unlikely that your project will be competitive. Um, that said, we really do encourage this kind of hybrid thinking between disciplines. So um, again, it's up for you to tell us if you think you're making work that could fall within the category of performing arts, technology, literature um, for this cycle or visual arts, moving image and film for next cycle. Um, and we're very open to hearing that kind of framing of a project. Um, so yes, the short answer is designers and architects could certainly be considered artists if you consider the work that you're making to be art. And we would really love to hear about that. Um, all right. Uh, if the project has been shown in other forums and publicly workshop before, but it still hasn't had a premiere, is it eligible? This is always a tricky question. Um, we're really looking to fund projects that are in very early stages of development. We anticipate our relationship with our awardees to be between three to five years, meaning that the project won't be ready for its public premiere or iteration for about three to five years after receiving the award. Um, so if your project is further developed than that, it's unlikely that it's going to be uh, competitive. Um, that said, if you're, looking to uh, significantly rework an idea, create a new work based on a series of projects that you've been working on for a long time, um, 
apply. Uh, it doesn't hurt to show us your idea, make the argument for why this is the right time for you to receive the Creative Capital Award and let our reviewers evaluate the work. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, well, I'll answer this question again. I know it's a very painful one. I may be doing my dissertation, but I've run out of funding and I'm working only part-time to finish the dissertation because I'm not funded and my lab to apply. Um, unfortunately, if you are still currently enrolled even part-time in a degree granting program, including a PhD, you're not eligible to apply. Um, so please do look into applying again once you finish the dissertation. All right, um, let's see. Um, so some people are asking questions uh, about that uh, second question about influences. Um, how do we define artistic influences? So I'll try and answer a couple of those at once. This is really an opportunity for you to position your work within a discourse, to tell us how you want your work read um, alongside other works that have Pave the way for its possibility? How are you thinking about the work that you do as an artist in relationship to a broader field? Um, so this is a way of, again, not only allowing our reviewers to situate how you're thinking about your work, but also to demonstrate that you're someone who has been working in the field as a professional artist and really has a grasp of what else is going on in the field, what historically has made it possible for the field to be where it is, um, and again, I should say, you know, there's no one art field. There are many, many different kinds of art fields. Um, and to give us a sense of, of how you understand your place within it. This really helps us look at the, again, sort of idea that you're proposing um, and to also better understand how you're thinking about innovation, right? So to tell us your understanding of what has conditioned the possibility for your work and how your work is innovative in relationship to that. Let's see. What else? Um, is it possible or frowned upon to apply with an application you've applied with before and made it past round one? Um, it is perfectly okay to apply with the project proposal that you've applied in the past uh, to Creative Capital with. I should note that our um, application cycle has changed a bit this year. As I mentioned, we've really streamlined this first round application, so it's less of a burden on artists. Um, so please be sure to look at the differences between past application cycles that you might have answered slightly different questions for and what we're asking you to respond to for this application. Um, also think about um, the sort of guidelines that I've set forth. Um, think about ways that you might be able to make your project proposal um, more directly responding to some of those um, and competitive within the frameworks that we've set out. Um, that said, I really do encourage people who've applied in previous years to apply again. Many of our awardees receive the award, not the first time they've applied, but their second, third, fourth. It's an incredibly competitive grant. Um, so please don't be discouraged if you've applied in the past and not received the award, um, please apply again. There's always a good chance that it, it could be your year. Right. Let's see. Um, is there assistance for developing an itemized budget? Um, this is a great question. In the application handbook, you'll note that we actually have some guidelines for how to write a budget, um, the kind of basic principles of what should be in there. Um, so please check that out. And if you have any specific questions about budget writing, please email us. We're happy to answer um, and help you with that. Uh, does the project need to be made in the US? No, the project can take place anywhere in the world. Um, the only eligibility criteria that has to do with the US is that you must be eligible to receive taxable income in the US. Right. Um, after artists have been notified for proceeding to round two, how much time will there be to provide those materials? That's a good question. You'll have at least a month to get those materials together. Though it never hurts to be thinking ahead. All right. uh, 
one person asking me to clarify something, which I uh, will, I'm happy to reiterate. Um, so uh, if your media is scheduled for next year, so if you're an artist who's working within visual arts or moving image, should you wait to submit your application for the next grant cycle? Yes, you should wait to submit your application. We'll do another open call. There'll be other info sessions. Um, so please wait until that 2024 cycle opens. Okay. Um, how many awardees are there? Uh, good question. Um, there's going to be 50 awardees for 2023. There were 50 awardees this year for 2022, um, which was up from 35 the last year in 2021. So 50 is a short answer. Um, all right. Uh, let's see. Can you find more than one category? No, unfortunately not. Um, you do have to pick which category you would like your application to be considered in. Um, so you'll see when you log into the application that there are the three main categories, performing arts, technology, and literature. If you select one of those, there's more subcategories underneath and you can pick up to three of those. Um, and we, of course, understand that these kinds of categorizations are always going to be imperfect. Okay. Um, let's see. And I should say too, if you have a very specific question about your work, um, uh, I'm going to try and answer more general questions now, but please do feel free to email us at uh, awards at creativecapital.org. Um, okay, this is a good question. Are there particular career milestones an applicant should have hit before they can realistically be considered a competitive applicant for the Creative Capital Grant? No, um, one of the things that we are committed to with Creative Capital is funding diversity in all of its forms. And that includes career stage. So we're looking to fund artists who are at very different stages in their career, emerging artists, mid-career artists, and established artists. There's no concrete milestone that you need to have hit to be competitive for the Creative Capital grant. Um, the only criteria that matters is the idea that you're putting forth in your project proposal. All of our evaluation is really centering that. Beyond the requirement that you have to have been a practicing artist for at least five years, um, there's really no other set kind of milestone. Right. Um, let's see. Um, oh, this is a good question. How do you define socially engaged practice? Um, this is a definition I imagine people define differently in different contexts, but I'll tell you the way that I understand it and I'll tell you the way that I think it's going to be useful to understand it for the purposes of the grant. Um, socially engaged work is work that seeks to transform something in the world, to do something in the world. Um, it can take the form of something called social practice, which is a kind of live happening. Um, there's various traditions of social practice things like relational aesthetic, uh, aesthetics um, and activism. Um, but socially engaged work can also occur in any different kind of discipline. A painting that is asking us to think about the bounds of representation, to think about who gets represented in what context and to intervene in that political question of how representation matters and how it's changed historically is a kind of practice that can be very socially engaged. So socially engaged just means that the work is trying to do something outside itself, outside in the realm of the social and the political. Um, so it's a broad definition, but it's a definition that centers this idea of impact and transformation. That said, socially engaged work, uh, as I really wanna emphasize, can take many different kinds of material forms. It can be social practice, but it need not necessarily be social practice. Um, are there restrictions or guidelines around political or activist bent of the project? Uh, that's a great question. I think it follows well from the last one. Um, no, there are no concrete restrictions or guidelines um, about the political or activist bent of the project. If you look at the projects that we've funded in the past, you'll note that we have taken on a lot of work and supported a lot of work that has very clear um, political messages behind it. Um, and we're really proud to do that. 
right. Uh, how do you find the application handbook? Good question. It's on our website, um, and it is also uh, something that we can drop in the chat as a link. Um, so my colleague Isaac will do that. Um, though you can also find it on the website. Uh, there's a button that says application handbook. All right. Um, when can you expect the visual art grants process to open up? Um, good question. That will be part of the 2024 grant cycle, which should mirror the timeline of the 2023 cycle. So if all goes according to plan, um, that should be in March of next year. Um, does the work have to be completed within the period of the grant? Um, it does not necessarily have to be. We understand that some works are extremely durational, that they take very, very long periods of time. Most of the projects who have received our award, or, uh, award <clears throat> excuse me, are completed within three to five years, um, but not all of them. Um, and we really try and work very closely with artists uh, to really help them realize the project in its entirety and to take the time they need in order to do that. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, can a collaborator be a full-time student in a degree granting program, or does the eligibility apply there as well? Um, the eligibility criteria apply to all collaborators on a project. Um, so again, someone doesn't necessarily need to be a collaborator on the project if they're not a full co-owner of the project. But if you do want to apply as a collaboration, the eligibility criteria apply to everybody equally. Okay. Um, Um, trying to answer questions that I have not already answered in some form. Um, oh, well, here's a quick question. Is it possible to see a sample letter of inquiry? Um, unfortunately, we do not have any samples to share. Um, and there's actually a purpose about that. There's no right or wrong way to fill out this application to respond to these questions. We really want you to be authentic and to be yourself in responding to them and to tell us um, in an honest way how you feel you are attending to these various questions in the project. All right. Um, let's see. Um, Sorry, I'm trying to find. <clears throat> uh, okay, here's one. Can you apply to both cycles? Um, so I think this means can you apply to the 2023 cycle and can you apply to the 2024 cycle? Theoretically, yes, this is possible as long as you do not receive the award in the 2023 cycle. The Creative Capital Award is something that you can only receive once in a lifetime. Um, if you apply this year with something in performing arts, technology, or literature, and you do not receive the award, you can absolutely apply again next year in 2024 with a visual arts project or a moving image project. Okay. Um, oh, here's a good question. How old can work samples be? Um, here we really encourage you to have work samples that are um, not older than five years old. We really want to see what you've been working on recently to get a better understanding of um, how you're going to be undertaking the project that you're proposing to us. Um, that said, it's not a hard and fast rule. If you don't have anything available, show us what you have. Um, I should also say related to this question, it's okay if you don't have work samples of the project that you're proposing, um, especially if something is in a you know, sort of very, very new stage. Um, we want projects to be in these early, early stages. Um, so it should be recent work, representative work, um, but it does not have to speak directly to the project that you're proposing. Okay. Um, Oh, here's a question. Uh, so um, someone uh, is asking for clarifications. Projects should be aimed uh, to be presented three to five years out, but funds are being dispersed either in 2023 or 2024. Um, so the way creative capital works is that um, we uh, use what we understand as a sort of model of venture philanthropy. Um, you receive the award, you get um, an initial 
chunk of funding um, for you know sort of getting on your way. Um, and then at key stages of the lifetime of your cycle, you're able to draw down more funds. Um, so your project might take three to five years to complete and you'll be able to receive funding um, over that period of time of up to $50,000. And then there's all the different kinds of advisory services that you'll be, um, uh, will be available to you as well. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, I think I've answered many of these in some fashion. Um, can the project be based across multiple geographical locations? Yes, um, and those do not have to be within the United States. Um, all right, uh, let's see. Um, how many applications are we expecting for the 2023 round? you predict exactly how many applications we'll receive, but I should say in the past few years, we've consistently received over 4,000 applications. So it is an extremely competitive grant. Um, and that would be my prediction for 2023. Um, all right. Uh, um, <clears throat> let's see. Um, Uh, so if you're asking a question about dates or things like that, I'm going to ask you to refer to the timeline that's on the website and in the application handbook. Um, let's see. Oh, here's another disciplinary question. Um, can you go for the visual art, what the visual art category includes and what is meant by time-based art? Um, so uh, visual art includes um, drawing, painting, printmaking, um, sculpture, installation. Um, it includes um, uh, time-based work, which could be work that is um, happening over time. So it could be performance art, um, but not something that would not necessarily happen in a black box theater, something that might be more appropriately staged in a gallery or in a, a different kind of context. Um, it could include sound art. Um, it can include uh, social practice. Um, so things that are um, using, I'd say, the framework and the, the, the language of visual art. The big distinction I want to draw is um, between what we consider performing arts and what might be considered performance art. There's a lot of overlap here, and I think it's really difficult to give any hard and fast guidelines about where to draw that distinction. So again, we want to put that in the hands of artists. If you think that the criteria of performing arts, so that's to say the criteria of dance, theater, music, you know, things like opera, jazz, if you think that that kind of conversation is the best conversation that your work fits into, that's the appropriate category for you. And you might hear again, really think about again, the audience, the kind of space the work might take place in. If your work really is engaging with the dynamics and again, discourses of visual art, if you're thinking about space and experience, if you're thinking about um, questions that have to do with uh, visual art history, um, that might be better fit in the visual arts um, category under the subdiscipline of time-based work, performance art, video art, or something like that. Um, so again, the Categorical distinctions um, are overlapping, and that's why we're giving the agency to you. Um, but that would be um, my attempt to clarify some of the ways that you could think about where which best position your work. Um, let's see. Um, is there a link to past projects that were funded? Um, yes, uh, you can find that on our website. Um, and I'm going to ask my colleague Isaac uh, when you have a minute to please drop a link into the chat um, so people can access it directly from this info session. All right. Um, will this recording be available on the website for later reference? Uh, yes, it will definitely be available on our website as well as our YouTube channel. Um, so please feel free to take a look um, again. Okay. Um, 
Uh, oh, here's a question. Um, if your application is unsuccessful, will you receive feedback from the review committee? Unfortunately, because of the thousands of applications that we receive, we're unable to offer feedback for applications that are not successful. Um, that said, um, I really want to emphasize that projects that weren't successful one year have been successful in later years. Artists who were not successful one year have been successful in later years. It's an incredibly competitive grant. Um, you know, it's over 4,000 people applying for about 50 grants uh, is you know, just over a 1% uh, rate. Um, so please don't be discouraged if your project is not selected for funding. Please apply again. Um, all right, let's see what else we have here. Um, Uh, so a couple people are asking um, about projects being funded by multiple grants. Um, so this person is asking if I've applied to another grant from a different force, uh, source project um, and end up being awarded both grants, is that okay? Um, yes, that's okay. You'll note, uh, again, if you look at our website and artists that we funded, um, that a lot of people either have you know, gone on to receive other sources of funding, either for the project that they have worked on with Creative Capital or for subsequent works. Um, so it's totally fine if your project is seeking multiple sources of uh, funding, especially if your project budget is really big. I know this can certainly be the case for certain kinds of um, theater works or, or film works. Um, so yes, uh, it's just something that we ask you to outline in the budget in round two. All right. Oh, here's a great question. What if my enrollment in a degree granting program is an art project? Um, again, I really do empathize with you. Um, unfortunately, even if it is an art project, you're still not eligible until you're out of school. Um, Here's a question asking me to talk about the non-monetary resources a bit more, um, and I'm happy to elaborate. We are thinking a lot of creative capital about the many different things in addition to money that artists need in order to get a project off the ground, bring it to a successful public premiere, and then also keep going with their careers. Um, so one thing that we think a lot about is the resources for financial planning and sustainability for artists. So things like financial literacy, things like um, you know, how do you do your taxes um, and things like that. Um, we're also thinking about long-term strategizing. So goal setting, um, questions of how you organize your time, uh, questions of how you envision your trajectory, your three-year plan, your five-year plan, your 10-year plan. Um, so we have advisors and coaches who are um, very skilled at helping people think through that kind of thing. We also know that lots of artists, especially artists who are making risk-taking work, have legal questions come up around their work, things that have to do with free speech um, and censorship, and, and then a bunch of other questions. So uh, we have, um, some lawyers who are available for consultation. Um, we also have um, some more specific uh, kinds of consultants. Uh, for example, we have one of our former awardees, Ken Seth Armstead is a commissioner on the New York uh, Design Commission. Um, and he is going to be leading, again, anyone interested in this, um, be leading some workshops for us about how to create a you know, successful uh, public project proposal. Um, and he's also one of the people who is you know, an example of the kind of consultant that you might have access to through Creative Capital. Um, for a sort of better understanding, again, please do see the website, um, the different workshops we've offered, the different kinds of conversations we've had. This is all a glimpse into the kind of services that are available through Creative Capital. Um, but it's really things that have to do with artists, um, not just in the moment that we meet them, but over the, the longevity of their career, thinking about what you'll need and, and how we can best give you the tools um, to realize what you need. Right. Uh, let's see. Um, so a couple questions about non-monetary services. Um, Here's a question. If I'm in Latin America, can I participate? Um, you can be based anywhere in the world. Um, you just have to be able to uh, receive taxable income in the United States, um, but you can live um, wherever. Um, so Latin America is totally fine. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, can you apply as an individual for one year and do collective or collaboration the following year? Um, yes, you just can't do both within one year. 
Okay. Um, know that we're nearing our time. So if anyone uh, has a question that is not answered by the info session, um, please do email us and please do try and email us uh, early because we're going to have limited capacity to provide support the, the week the application closes. Um, all right, let's see. Um, Uh, so I've seen this question a couple of times, so um, maybe I'll speak to it. Um, can we advise on how to select between emerging and mid-career artists? How are we defining these? Um, this is always, again, a kind of tricky question. Um, and it's something that, again, I really want to give the agency to you to define. Um, think about what you want in your career. Think about the sort of larger trajectory of where you see yourself, um, you know, sort of in your artistic practice. And I think use that as a basis um, for answering that question. Artistic careers look really different across disciplines and they are really different across artists. So I think they're actually the best person to judge um, where that distinction lies. And in many cases, it's really a personal decision that we're asking you to, to tell us about as a way to better understand your work. All right, um, let's see. Um, trying to find some questions we haven't answered already. Um, uh, is it possible to preview the application? Um, the application is now open and you can uh, log in, set up an account, and you can see the entire thing um, before you submit it. Um, so I really encourage anyone interested in applying to log in right now, take a look at the application. Um, it has all the information I described, but you can really get a sense of, of how, you know, how it looks in the portal and, and how it's going to look to fill it out. All right. Um, let's see. So I've seen this question a couple of times um, and it's a hard one, but I'll, I'll try my best to answer. Um, what advice do I have to make an application stand out? Um, this is really hard to answer because what makes an application stand out is often this kind of element of surprise of it being something we haven't seen before, of it feeling very vital, very fresh, very urgent um, in the moment that you're proposing it. Um, so I'd say, you know, again, this is something that artists are sort of best equipped to figure out um, for themselves. It's kind of a, you know, sort of moment to exercise creativity. Um, so the things that make a project stand out are really the kind of, um, it really has to do with the boldness of the idea. The boldness of the idea, the innovation, the originality, this quality of it being, um, you know, feeling very, uh, very urgent, risk-taking, um, innovative. That said, um, please be clear as much as you can in answering the questions. Um, something that I think uh, can get confusing when you're filling out an application um, is how to best articulate a very bold, innovative idea, a very complex idea succinctly within the guidelines and framework that we give you to answer the questions. Um, so one thing that I think all successful applications have had in common is clarity and concision in the way that they describe the idea. So the idea itself should be bold, risk-taking, innovative. The way you describe it, the kind of you know way that you put sentences together, I think often it's best to um, really think about clarity and really think about how you can best communicate your idea as succinctly, as simply, and as effectively as possible to a unknown person, right? A, a, an, an anonymous evaluator um, who's going to know what you're talking about in terms of the disciplinary framework, but is reading about your work for the first time. All right, almost at the end of time. Um, so uh, um, someone's asking for the email address again. Um, I'm gonna ask my colleague Isaac to post it in the chat so everybody has it, but it's, awards at creativecapital.org. Um, so feel free again to send us more specific questions if you have them. Um, and let's see if I can fit in maybe two more questions. Um, uh, let's see. Um, uh, such pressure. 
Um, will this webinar have a replay? Um, yes, it's going to be recorded, uh, so feel free to check out the recording. We also have past info sessions recorded, and they all have slightly different things happening in the Q&A, so um, it could be useful to, to see those as well if you're looking for potentially different questions. Um, okay, um, let's see, try and answer a couple more. Um, Oh, here's a question. What if collaborators are at different stages of our careers? Can we enter information for both? Um, you will eventually be able to enter information for you as well as your collaborator. Um, I think, though, as the initial applicant, so the, the person who's actually filling it out, um, you should fill it out as it relates to you. And you can provide additional information about the collaborator at other places in the application. All right. And let's see. Um, all right. Um, I can get one more question in. Uh, all right. Uh, let's see. Um, I think, let's see. Um, all right, well, I'm just gonna go with the one that's right in front of me. Um, is technology art? Yes, technology is art. Uh, we do wanna understand though, why you are proposing this piece of technology as art. What is the work doing that has to do not only with the use of emerging technologies, but also, again, you know, sort of has to do with the conceptual idea behind the project. It's innovation, it's risk-taking quality, it's originality. Um, so yes, and we are, you know, again, have this whole field, um, or sorry, whole discipline, uh, disciplinary category of technology, because we do think technology is art. Um, but please tell us, why is the piece that you're proposing art? And what is it doing? And what is its impact as a piece of art? Okay, I know I didn't get to a lot of your questions and I apologize. Um, again, please do feel free to email us. Um, I highly encourage you though, to check out the application handbook, which has some frequently asked questions in there, which might answer questions um, that have come up for you that I was unable to answer. Um, and otherwise, we really look forward to hearing from you. Um, please do apply for either the 2023 application cycle, which is open now, or the 2024 application. Um, we're really looking forward to learning more about everybody's work. And thank you for joining me today. Thank you.